In this tutorial, we will show you how to import, create and edit vectors to make the example that you see on the screen. This is a two piece assembly that slots together with a mortise and tenon style joint. We will then look at creating some extra vectors for tool pathing and place them onto various layers for simplicity. So let's start by creating a new file. So under file new, this is going to be a single sided job. It's going to be 12 inches in width, eight inches in height, a thickness of 0.625. Our Z0 is going to be set from the material surface and our XY datum is in the lower left hand position. So I have got that set. I have my workpiece ready. The next stage is for us to is to import the vectors, okay, that I'm going to use for the name plaque. And of course, this can be specific to any particular job you want to create. So with this, I'm going to go into file operations and go into import vectors. And I've got my name underscore text.eps. So I'm going to import that into the job and it shows being dead center there. Now for the size of my workpiece, this is too big. So I need to come across and resize that. So under transform objects, we have the set selected object size command. I'm going to pop that form open. And within this in particular, the link X, Y is going to be switched on. So when I modify the width, it will proportionally modify the height to suit. So I'm going to set this to 10 now and apply which has reduced that size and I'm going to close that form and simply reselect to put it into transform mode and hold the alt key down because what I want to do is move this up and I'm just going to move this up and slightly out of the way because we need to create the base so with that I've now moved my vector towards the top allowing this extra space underneath for the rectangle base that we're going to create next so moving across to the rectangle now and in this case, I'm going to pop this up and place this and the size of this will be 11 inches in width and two inches in height. And we are going to place an external radius of 0.5. So it's going to rather than sharp, it's going to have a nice uh, rounded corner. And I'm simply going to just place that somewhere in the center there, close out the form and just center that by coming up to the align selected objects under the transform and select at the very top there a line in the center left to right so i'm not going to put it in the center of the job just move it centered left to right okay so with that now i've created the lower sort of base and we can now move forward to think about how these two pieces are going to go together okay so let's close out that form and think about how we're going to piece the model onto the top of the base um, well the best way of doing this really is to put a couple of tabs or tenons on the base one on the m and one on the l and then create two slots in the base so the molly can be turned vertical and then slotted onto the top of the base so with that i now need to think about the tenons or tabs that we're going to add on to the bottom of molly so with this i'm going to go and create a rectangle so i'm just going to quickly just create that on the screen and then modify this to be 0.5 in width but the height rather than going to full depth of the material which is 0.625 I'm going to go 0.375 okay so they're not going to go all the way through and then the next stage is to place this in the correct location so with that I select it again to put it into transform mode I'm going to hold the left mouse key down now over the sort of midpoint of the top edge and I can now move that around and literally just place it into the correct location and I'm going to do the same now to move it across to the other side so I'm going to hold the control key down because I want I want to keep the original in the same place and make a copy and just pick that up now and just move that across and place on the midpoint at the bottom of the L. Okay, so we've got uh, some tabs there that are 0.5 inches in width and 0.375 inches in height. We now need to think of the slots that we're gonna create on the base. So um, one thing we need to bear in mind is that we are gonna be creating a bevel along the top of the letters okay to give it a nice chamfered feel to it so we need to make sure that the tabs okay when we create the pockets on the base are not the full width of 0.625 but reduced to account for the bevel so in this case we'll probably go for 0.5 inch okay in which case we already have a width of 0.5 so this is going to be a square of 0.5 by 0.5 so with that now, I can come up to the draw rectangle command. I could enter the values in the form, but another way of doing this is to use the um, 
transform shortcuts, which mean, allows me to just stretch the command. So I've got my left mouse key kept down. I can go into the keyboard now and hit 0.5 return. And that would have created a square that is 0.5 all round. So I can close down that form now. I now need to think about positioning this in line with the center of the tab and in line with the center of the left hand edge. So I'm going to put it into transform mode now and just come up and wake up that point on the bottom of the tab, okay, which creates me that vertical line, then wake up the center point here, come across and locate it in the correct position. And now I need to do the same on the other side. So with this, I'm just gonna copy this. So I'm gonna hold control key D down now, come across and just wake up that center point, come down and we found that center there. Okay, so one thing to bear in mind is if I leave these slots in this location, the actual Molly sign will be slightly shifted forward when I place it in because we need to make a count of the fact that we will actually have a little bit of extra material at the front here. So essentially I need to move these two back a little bit. So I'm gonna pick these two now and go into the uh, move selected objects. I'm gonna move it um, relative and I'm gonna move them up by just 0.125 okay and apply that which means that when we place the um, molly onto the slots it will appear center across the middle here okay also it would have appeared a little forward had we not moved it okay so now we need to think really about what we're going to do about machining we've got the core essence of the vectors but we need to think about things like the profiling about creating the um, the, the letter bevels, what we might do about the, how we're going to pocket these particular tabs and also make sure that we're allowing for the fact that we've got essentially a square fitting into a square hole, which would be very difficult for us to create. So with that, we now need to think about creating multiple layers and copies of the vectors. Okay, so to start with, let's take a look at what layers that we currently have already in the part. Now we have just two, which is the uh, layer one, which was created with the original part. You can clearly see by the fact there are no vectors on the blank page, so that it is empty, in which case I can just right mouse key and delete that layer. This uh, second layer, this import name underscore text.eps um, is the name of the original file is brought in and it's created a layer under that name. So I'm just going to rename that now and, and call this cutout because this will be used as the basis for profiling around our job to finish with, okay? And that is currently the active layer. So we one is to consider the profiling around the part to cut it out. Um, another one we need to consider is the beveling of the letters. So with that, I'm now going to just box pick across there from right to left through the part there and I've selected the molly vectors and I'm going to right mouse key now and copy to a new layer. So this is going to be a new layer and I'm going to call this um, uh, letter bevel and I'm going to switch that layer off okay and it's not going to be active so it will disappear off the screen and the next stage is for me to consider uh, the two sort of tabs that we've got here. Now we're gonna need to create oversized pocket regions to mill these uh, tabs away. So I'm just gonna, once again, take these two here and right mouse key and copy to layer, new layer. And in this case, I'm gonna call this uh, pocket tabs okay and once again I'm not going to make that layer visible and finally I'm going to think about really the modifications we need to do to the slots here so I'm going to pick those two there and I'm not going to copy them I'm just going to move to layer new layer and this is going to be called slots okay so we've created a number of different layers all with the information that we're going to be using for machining so if we just come back up to the top now, we can see these different layers. So I'm just gonna switch off the slots first. So you can see that slots on, slots off, and we can switch off the uh, cutout that we've got there. 
and we now have the letter bevel which is just the uh, molly letters in itself and then we've got the pocket tabs which are the two squares uh, at the base of the M and the L okay so with that I'm now just going to switch the cutout back on all the other layers are switched off and we need to think about what we're going to do to cut round the letter molly along with the tabs because currently they are all separate vectors now ideally what we need to do is to create this all into one external piece plus obviously the inner circle of the O so to do that simply I'm going to pick my vectors there and come across to the weld command on the edit objects menu so when I select that now everything looks okay it's kept the perimeter but we have lost the inner circle of the O so I'm just going to hit Control Z to come out of that now and then hit the shift and deselect that from the selected items on the screen and then weld that and we have exactly what we want there okay so we've got um, the perimeter of the whole of the molly set up ready for us to cut round this at the end and so we can release that before we slot it into the base the next thing we need to think about really is making the modifications to allow the molly to actually fit onto the base given the fact that we're going to be cutting this with a 3 16 end mill okay so with that I'm going to come up to the uh, layers and just switch on the slots as well but my cutout is still the active layer so uh, if we cut round the letter M with a 3 16 tool and I'm just going to draw that up now so we're going to diameter and I can hit 3 divided by 16 equals to put that into decimals and I'm just going to place one there close out the form and we can see that if we move into this region we are going to be leaving material on the outside of the corner and if we come down now and, and machine the slot with this we're once again going to be machining and leaving material in the corner so we need to make allowances given the tool we're going to be using so I'm just going to delete out that uh, circle vector which was just an example of the tool and we're going to look to add some fillets to this part to allow this all to piece together so coming across to the edit objects menu and selecting the fillet option and in this case there are a number of uh, sort of uh, dog bone or t-bone fillets that could help but we need to bear in mind that when this piece is together we want to try and make sure that the fillet is not being shown actually physically on the part that is essentially hidden underneath the molly vectors so the t-bone is going to be the best option to use certainly when we're talking about the slots okay so with this i'm going to come into the base of the m here and we've got a number of different sides that we can add it onto but we're going to add it onto this side and the actual radius that we're going to use is going to be 3 divided by 16 equals gives us the diameter but of course we want the radius so we're going to divide that by 2 and equals which is just under 0.1 of an inch so I'm going to round that up to 0.1 of an inch to allow a little bit more tolerance for the fit and we'll just put 0.1 in there and come in now and just add that onto the relevant sides okay and I'm going to do the same on the L here and this allows us to machine round so in essence we do have a sharp edge that will be created naturally by the tool so coming into our slot region now and once again I need to oversize these sides here I've not gone this side because obviously you would see that at the back of the um, letter so we're going to go just at the sides so it's hidden underneath the molly so with that I've now created those slots so we can see now that we've made the uh, allowances for the tool to make sure the molly is going to fit on top of the base. Okay, so the next stage is for us to consider how we're going to create the beveled edge on the molly vectors. So I'm going to come up now and just switch off the cutout switch on the letter bevel, make sure that is the active layer. And now we're just going to zoom down and take a look at these letters. So in essence, what we want to do is make sure that the O sits on top of the M, the L sits on top of the O, the 
next L sits on top of the previous L and finally the Y is on top of the L. Now to do that is quite simple in the fact that we just need to trim away part of the vector to create this effect. So I'm going to come into the um, interactive trim, the scissors under the edit objects menu and just delete out the segments that I don't need. So you can see that as the cursor goes over the scissors open and it just allows me to chop away the bits that I don't need. So the O now it feels like it's sat on top of the M and we're going to do the same with the L there, same with the um, uh, second L and of course finally with the Y. So in essence we've got the Y on top of the L, on top of the L, on top of the O, on top of the M. So this is the effect that we were looking for. And then we can look to create a sort of profile on toolpath to create that nice beveled edge. Okay, so we've modified the uh, information for the molly so that's great so i can essentially now switch that off okay and i'm going to switch the cutout back on okay and i'm just going to switch the pocket tabs on okay now we can see here that the pocket tabs are exactly the same size as the tab that we're going to create on the base of the m and what we need to do is to oversize this because we'll be machining this with a flat bottom tool that has a radius approximately of about 0.1 of an inch. We need to make sure that we come past the edge of the tab when creating that sort of localized region for the pocketing. So with that, I do need to make a modification to the vector. So with that, I'm simply going to select now that region I've got, which is the first one of the pocket tabs, and oversize that to account for this. So I'm going to move across now to the, um, uh, the rectangle command, which I can also do by hitting E on the keyboard, which will open that menu up for the selected shape item. And we can see that our current width is 0.5 and then 0.375 in height. Now, bearing in mind we want to widen it by 0.1 inch either side and just 0.1 inch on the base, I'm going to increase the width from 0.5 to 0.7 and the height from 0.375 to 0.475. So with that, I can apply. We can immediately see that we've made that modification. Now, to save time, I'm not going to do the same with the other side. I'm actually physically just going to delete that one out and we're going to modify um, this particular one and then make a copy to the other side. So to do that, I'm simply going to select it, put it into transform mode, hover over the midpoint, and then I want to really locate off of this line to create a construction line. And then we're going to find that center there and just drop that down and place that in position. I want to do the same on the other side. So I'm going to hit the control key down and just hover over the center point or the midpoint of that top edge, move that across. I want to hover on this line here, okay, and come across and off the midpoint there, come back up and let go. And now we have our two edges. Okay, at this stage, I think we've created all the vectors. Let's zoom to fit now, and we'll just go in and check all the items that we've got. So I'm just going to switch those off. We've got the cutout, okay, which we're happy with. We've got the letter bevel, okay, so set up for our sort of profile bevel cut. And then we've got our tabs, which we can see at the base there. And of course, they will be slightly larger than our cutout, okay. And then of course, we do have the slots uh, into which the molly will go. So at this point, we've created all the vectors and we can go ahead and save with a view to creating the toolpathing, uh, which you can see in a later presentation. So with that, I'm going to go to File, Save As, and save this as Child's Name Plaque Vector Drawing, and save that ready for machining.